Welcome everybody to Fast and Fun. Rich here on my penultimate video of 2022 um, to be released in a couple of days time. And this video is going to look back at the running costs, all up costs of running, maintaining my five sports cars. Well, four and a half because the Shogun Sport is sport only in name, not in nature. And I'm excluding the Honda Civic EP2 Sport because that's my son's and he maintains, runs that at his own cost. This year, slightly different because I'm doing the whole up cost of everything other than fuel. So it's going to look at servicing, it's going to look at maintenance, it's going to look at repairs, it's going to look at my insurance, vehicle exercise duty or road tax, what I've bought, what I've sold and also the grey area I suppose is appreciation and depreciation on what I think my cars were worth 12 months ago or what I think they're probably worth now because that, the depreciation, is the silent killer for many cars and that, I'm going to try to take that into consideration for this year's review. Let's go straight to the first car then. We'll work his way round from left to right, look at each car and let's find out and well, let's start with my Mazda MX-5 Mark I, Unos Roadster, JDM import. So my cheap little Mark I that I bought a few years ago, um, for not a lot of money, um, it's not been used very much this year. It's only done about a thousand miles all year. Um, it's currently got oh, 82,000 miles on the clock. It's actually 133,000 kilometres, but which equates to 82,000 miles. I've had 1,000 miles this year. Um, that included an Elon Valley, mid-Wales road trip with a group of MX-5s earlier on um, in the first part of the year. Um, cost £35 for its MOT. There was one advisory for that, which was a misting on the, the one of the shock absorbers. Um, I'll come on to that shortly. And then rear pads and discs. <coughs> After I did the road trip up into Wales, um, had a problem with the pads um, and discs, scoring on the discs. So I did them myself, uh, £22 and £46 respectively. Um, so all up, including VAT, it was £82 for the rear pads and discs. Fitted them all myself. Um, easy enough to job to do. The only problem was, and why I found out there was a problem, was on the passenger side rear, um, the caliper was, the, the, the piston inside the caliper was seized, so I ended up having to get a new caliper, um, which was about £70 from Euro Car Parts. Um, it, it comes out at about 100 105 I think, um, but there's a surcharge, and when you take your old one back, you get your £30, £35 back. So all up, it was about £70 for the new caliper. Again, I fitted it myself just to keep the cost down, um, and that's it. So low use, all up about two hundred pound. That's all it's cost me. Obviously, me doing some of the work helps. I talked last year about I wanted to get the suspension sorted, the struts, coilovers, whichever way I go for this car. Um, still on the to-do list. Never got round to it this year. It's on the bucket list for twenty twenty-three. But two hundred pound, cheapest chips driving. If you can get a good one. Great buy. Next, the STI. Next up is the STI. Uh, STI has done 99,000 miles, so right on the brink of hitting the big six digit 100,000. Um, so 99,000 miles, done about 2,000 this year in the car. Again, took it up to Wales a couple of times. Um, fabulous car, but what about the running costs? Well, MOT, £35 again. Advisory on that was tyres, uh, which I knew about. So um, I got four new tyres fitted. My default's normally Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's. Not an option for the STI on its standard alloys because they're only 17 inch. Um, PS4 S's uh, only start at 18 and above. So um, I ended up going with PS5's. Michelin Pilot. Relatively impressed with them. The, 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 we went up to Wales in really bad conditions. Um, one weekend for sort of a, a Saturday and Sunday long weekend and it, it, it was absolutely awesome. The tyres were phenomenal, especially in the wet. Um, they were £350 
all fully fitted. That was from Costco. Um, uh, yeah, good price, I thought that. Um, then got an alignment done at £30 as well. And then at the back end of the year, I took it up to Mark at Thwaites um, in Warwick, um, for, who was a um, Subaru um, specialist, and got a full service done there, got the brake fluid done, got clutch fluid done, £240. So again, really reasonable um, and actually highly recommend. Mark's a really, really nice, approachable guy. So that's it for the cost. No faults, no issues at all with the car. £650 all in to maintain what is supposed to be a very, very expensive car to run. Um, not at the moment, touch wood. <clears throat> all going well. Um, again, but relatively lightly used. Um, it's just the fuel, the fuel that this thing runs. Um, again, I'm averaging about 18 to the gallon. So next up is my favourite little Renault Sport, the Clear 182. Um, this car's now got 118,000 miles on the clock. Um, it's done about 2,000 miles this year. Um, again, had a couple of trips up to Wales with the Renault Sport gang. Fabulous car, love it to pieces, and even more uh, entertaining is that it's cost me nothing all year. I haven't spent a penny on it, um, including MOT. The reason for that, the MOT was due in November, so I ran it up to the MOT day and now taking it off the road. So, um, it, it'll, albeit it needs a really good wash, clean, dry, um, and put it away for a few months during the worst of the winter. So it never had an MOT because the MOT is now expired. It has got an ABS sensor fault, <clears throat> which it's had for a few weeks, so I need to get that resolved, which I'll do during the winter while it's off the road. Needs two new Michelin Pilot Sport 3s as well, so two new tyres will be needed for it. And next year in 2023, that's the five-year point for the cam belt service. So that's the big one for the 182s. Big expensive job, eight £900 probably for the service in the cam belt. Um, Big cost next year, so that's with the tyres and everything. You're probably going to be looking at well over a thousand pound next year just on preventative um, servicing and maintenance on this with, with the cam belt and the tyres, but nothing at all for 2022. I like that. Next up is the workhorse of the family by Shogun Sport um, 2.5 turbo diesel. Um, Currently on 113,000 miles, so we've done about between four to 5,000 miles this year, in 2022. It's the go-to, it's for the dogs, it's for the horse, for the towing. It's just go anywhere, down forest tracks, off-road, through fields, and also just rural life in general. It's just fantastic. It just does everything. Um, cost this year, £35 for the MOT. Um, there was an advisory on a slight corrosion on one of the rear brake lines. Nothing substantial there. The only didn't get service this year, but what it did have is a fault with leaking power steering fluid, I noticed. Um, had to keep topping it up, and eventually I got the power steering box replaced, which is here, right down at the bottom. Really awkward position to get to. That was about £300 for the unit it's about 400 pound but again you get a surcharge when you send your old one back so i did that online uh, about 300 pound for the unit and about 160 pound for it to be fitted but, um, so all in that was 460. it does it's on the borderline for tires um, in fact it's probably just over that border actually so it will need new tires in um uh, in the new year but that will obviously incur in 2023 um, costs not in 2022 so they're likely costs and probably a service during 2023 as well so all up with the mot with the power steering box failure 500 pound that's what it's cost me this year uh, love the car robust chunky does everything although it's got sport in the name that's probably the only bit of sport in it but do you know what for rural day-to-day -day life you just need something like that okay now to the daily them again. I did a more detailed review of this car only a couple of weeks ago, looked at the whole running cost for this car over two years and I'll put a link up there to, to that video as well. But for this year, 
Um, it's got 137,000 miles on the clock. It's done 14,000 miles this year. So, as can be said, it's definitely the, the family car. Use it for everything, whether it's shopping, commuting. Um, it is the go-to daily car. Um, cost this year for new Michelin Pilot Sport 5 S's, um, £500, again on offer through Costco, fully fitted, an MOT at £35. I did put it on the dyno. Again, I'll put a link to another video up there because I wanted to see what this standard Meg was making after 100 plus thousand miles and 12 years, um, and that was £60. I then got service, um, there was a spring replace, some suspension work on it, which was £700. And then uh, a few months later, again, there was more suspension work, low suspension arms, uh, anti roll bar bushes. Um, again, although the parts are cheap, it's, access is really, really difficult. That was £400. So this year it's cost me £1,700 on the maintenance and repair of the, um, of the Megan. With regard to ins and outs, what I bought, what I sold, remarkably, 2022 was one of those rare years that I didn't buy a car. Um, and that probably says more about the cars that I've currently got than about anything else. So I think I have got my eye on a, a few things for 2023, so I'm sure I'll be adding and maybe parting with one or two um, next year. But in 2022, bought no new cars. But I did sell one because I started the car uh, the, the year with the BMW Z3, the 2.2 six-cylinder Roadster. Um, sold that part way through the year, um, and that uh, just the values of those. I just I don't know what it was, but there's just there just seemed to be rock bottom um, of the market. Never really bonded with that Z3 though particularly, and ended up selling that um, for a 200 pound loss um, but I did have again a year's worth of driving with that car I did say at the start of the video I was going to talk about all up costs so all the costs for me insurance so for me to insure all six cars at the start of the year now for the five cars for the whole year 660 pound from myself and my other half um, fully comprehensive some of them have limited mileage um, but again that's a fall from the previous year that was about a thousand as say £660, which is, I think, great and probably shows my age rather than, rather than anything else. Road tax or vehicle exercise duty, as the term is now, um, because I never have all five stroke six cars on the road at any given time, I normally have probably three, so there's always two or three sawn at any given time. So I've budgeted there and I've said about, most of the cars are about £30-ish a month, and I do it on a monthly basis. I've budgeted about 80 to 90 pounds per month for VED. So I've said probably about a thousand pound on vehicle exercise duty per annum. So the all up figure is about 5,100 pounds um, in regard to um, the insurance, vehicle exercise duty, profit and loss of bought and sold cars, and the servicing, maintenance and repair of all five stroke six cars. Um, but there's one other thing that I wanted to include in the calculation when I look back, because I think depreciation and appreciation, it's a real cost to owners that quite often is overlooked. Now I know it's a really gray area and I know there's nothing black and white about this, but I do look at the market quite regularly. I think I know where values are going on certain cars and so I want to put that into this calculation. So first of all let's take a look and walk around what I think my values of my cars have done during 2022. I think it's safe to say that the market has been split in two halves. We had a very buoyant first six months of 2022. Values were strong, second-hand car markets were strong across the patch Second half, we've gone into this cost of living crisis, fuel prices, food prices, energy prices, everything's going up, mortgage rates are going up, so it's th there's a real cost of living, and that's certainly affected the, the, the second-hand car market generally in the second half of the year. If I talk about the MX-5 briefly, what do I think have happened to values in 2022? I think, that's, I think those, because they're so cheap, because they're so low cost, to run, to buy in the first place, get a good one. Um, 
Um, I think those have actually bucked the trend in 2022. I think I've seen good, steady growth in Mark 1 values. Certainly from this time last year, they are more um, expensive. Did a, did a search in auto trader the other day for Mark 1s. And other than a rust bucket at 1,500 quid, um, the next cheapest Mark 1 was over 5K. They are clearly advertising price, not the actual sell price. Fully appreciate that. But Mark 1 prices are, for me, booking the trend. They're continuing to appreciate value. And I think this is worth quite a few hundred pounds more than it was 12 months ago. And the forecast for me is those will continue to rise because they're cheap cars to buy and they're cheap cars to run. STI, next. STIs have had really good growth over the last few years. Um, and the first half of 2022, prices were going absolutely mental on these cars. Um, there's been a price correction. There's definitely the market has softened and I would say has dropped in the second half of the year. Um, and that's because they're expensive cars to run, especially if you people are wanting to daily these cars. There's definitely been a softening of prices. And I think they're probably back now to where they were at the start of the year. So for me, I think my STI is sort of trod water. I don't think it's lost anything, but I'm not sure it's gained anything in value either. So I've put this one as a neutral in regard to value. Let's have a look at the clear. So the clear is an interesting one. Um, again, these prices have been on the up, but not going stratospheric. And I don't think they ever will do really. Um, it's just very, very slow growth. Um, and I think there's an issue with the clear in regard to when you've got Megans that, uh, and I'll come on to where the Megan prices are, and there's a, I can't see the average clear 182 being worth more than the average Megan RS250. And so I think there's a ceiling that where Megans are. I think that the, the, the cheapest chips have gone. I think it can't go above the Megan RS250s. I don't believe because of the, the, the massive difference in, in the type of cars that they are. But I think mine has just gone slightly higher again it's very very steady it's a few hundred pound i think worth more than it was 12 months ago shogun sports they fit this the four by four criteria is you just don't seem to get anything for less than sort of two grand shogun sports have been sat the bottom of the market's been sat at around two two and a half thousand now for a few years um the market's still the bulk of them are sat two and a half to three and a half K. They were about two and a half K to three and a half K 12 months ago. And my forecast is they will continue to be that sort of value. There's always worth in these. I think rural communities in particular want these type of cars with the diesel engines that just go and go and go. And for me, it's trud water. It's not gained anything. It's not lost anything. It's the same value as it was 12 months ago. And then finally, the Megan. I bought this Megan two years ago. The bottom of the market then was about 6,000. Last year, the bottom of the market was about 6,000. Now, the bottom of the market is about 6,000. And that's considering mine with 137,000 miles on the clock, used, abused to a degree, but well serviced as well. And I still think the bottom of the market is still at 6K to 7k even these higher mileage ones they're not dropping much below there and i think they're not because you've got sort of clear 182 price as well they're a bit older um cheaper cars that are holding the megan rs 250 prices the bulk of the rs 250s the sort of the good average car is sat between 8 and 10k still with a few low mileage really tidy ones above 10k they've not moved and even though I've put another 14,000 miles on this year, I think the Megane hasn't moved in value. So I know the last bit's very me, probably rose-tinted spectacles, I suppose, looking at values year to year. But I generally have tried to be as honest and as neutral in my bias as possible, if that sort of makes sense. Um, I think the Mark 1 x 5s certainly gone up in value. I think that's the clear appreciator. I think the 182, as I say, has bumped the trend and has gone up a few hundred. But I'll still stick that the STI, the Shogun Sport, 
and the McGann haven't lost a thing. And so if I put a value on this, I just feel that the five cars are probably worth maybe a £1,000 more than they were worth 12 months ago. And that is why I do this. That's why I think I can afford to do this. So my £5,100-ish pounds for maintenance, servicing, repair, tax, insurance, I think is probably you can probably lock a £1,000 off that in regard to appreciation of the total assets of the garage. So I'm putting 2022 down as about a £4,000 cost of running my five sports cars. I hope that's been slightly informative. A view, looking at the numbers, and now we'll look into 2023 and hopefully a few changes planned. As always, if you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. Any questions, any comments you've got, if you disagree with my views, thoughts, especially on values, please drop comments below and subscribe. As always, stay tuned and thanks for watching. Next new video next week.